Sengoku is the most downplayed character in all of One Piece. But what do I mean by this? Well, when it comes to anime versus debates, fans often diminish characters in a series to reinforce their own preconceived views on established topics. With the most glaring example of this being the scaling surrounding the Buddha Sengoku. As both Admiral and Yonko fans alike do their best to belittle the feats surrounding the former fleet Admiral, as well as his generation. However, in today's video, I'm here to shed light on the insane power of the man with the highest authority in the Navy, in hopes that I can establish Sengoku as one of the strongest characters in the entire series. So, with intros out of the way, let's get into the scaling. When it comes to Sengoku, the first and arguably most important thing we need to talk about is portrayal. The reason I say this is because oftentimes when it comes to versus mashups in anime, fans tend to embellish particular feats of characters they like, while also ignoring any key factors or nuances that apply to said feats. This then leads to unnecessary conjecture on instances the author probably didn't intend to be heavily analyzed in the first place, which just causes arguments to become circular. Therefore, in my opinion, statements on character strength when properly contextualized through the narrative takes precedence over feats alone, which is extremely relevant in the case of Sengoku as the most notable lore in regards to the Buddha usually revolves around his standing in the navy, with there being a particular statement which translates as follows. Quote, he is known as Sengoku the Buddha, the highest authority figure in the navy. Since his youth, he firmly believed in the government's orders and climbed up to his current position by faithfully carrying out his duties, end quote. The reason this statement is so important is because there's an ongoing debate to this day on whether Sengoku's role as the fleet admiral was simply one of leadership that has no bearing on his strength, or if the title in and of itself automatically makes Sengoku the strongest fighter in the navy aside from his rival Gart. If you ask me though, I think it's pretty clear that while this statement specifically doesn't make Sengoku the strongest man in the navy over the likes of the admirals, his title of fleet admiral does narratively imply that he's at least as strong as or stronger than his literal subordinates. Especially when you consider it's told to us time and time again that rank in the navy directly correlates to fighting ability, which is one of the reasons the Gorosei pushed for Akainu to be promoted after Sengoku's retirement in the first place, not because his ass was good at giving motivational speeches. With this logic pretty much being proved to us when we see Garp go head to head with Kuzan, who in addition to being a former admiral was also likely a decent bit stronger than during his time in the navy, as it's implied he was able to hockey bloom during his 10 day fight with Akainu on Punk Hazard. Yet an old Garp who was self admittedly weakened by age was able to outspeed and injure a wavering Kuzan, and even stalemated with his former student while in a weakened state without using a named attack. Therefore, at this point, it should be pretty clear that both Garp and Sengoku are at the bare minimum as strongest post time skip Akainu and Aokiji as old men, and have consistently been portrayed to be above the likes of the original Admirals. Some common refutations I've heard in regards to these arguments though are your classic brain dead takes like Aokiji was holding back and beat Garp low diff, and that for some reason the new generation always surpasses the old in One Piece, which is just a myth that was never stated anywhere. When it comes to the first so-called debunk, I plan to make a whole video addressing why people don't understand how Kizaru and Kusan were actually affected by their emotions during their respective fights. But as for the gist of the video, I was simply planning on pointing out the blatant bias that comes with claiming that the admirals are always holding back and have never showed their full power, as said full power is essentially just speculation. Which in my opinion is insanely dumb and annoying as you can use the argument that they're not going all out to invalidate any anti-feats and then just make up a power level for them that best fits your agenda. So essentially until the admirals show their full power which is supposedly very far away from happening, then they're as strong as admiral fans want them to be which is usually stronger than the Yonko in the old generation. However, thanks to us seeing Old Whitebeard versus Akainu and Marineford, it's made pretty clear once again that old generation characters like Whitebeard, Garp, and by extension Sengoku are a bit stronger than the Admirals. As an old dying Whitebeard who was weakened by age and illness was still able to draw blood from and immobilize the Kainu in two hits, which regardless of what you want to say about the result of the fight means that any old gen character could do the same. Especially Garp and Sengoku, who have suffered no drop off in power since their prime due to illness, pretty much deading any argument for the admirals being stronger than Sengoku even in old age. 
Additionally, Sengoku via his relativity to Old Whitebeard should also be considered above the likes of every Yonko aside from Shanks and Blackbeard. Since it's stated on multiple occasions that Whitebeard when sustained on his meds specifically was the strongest pirate in the world not just in name but in reality, which would include Gear 5 Luffy and even Kaido. With this being backed up by the fact that Old Whitebeard and Garp were able to inflict more damage against stronger admirals than Luffy was in the 5th gear, clearly showing that the old men have better AP than some of the strongest Yonko. Putting even old Sengoku in the discussion for top 5 strongest living characters we've seen in the series so far, and arguably top 4 of all time, as like I've already mentioned through his rivalry with Garp, he's also relative to both Prime Whitebeard and Pirate King Roger, who are the strongest pirates to ever live. Which in my opinion should really put into perspective how strong the Buddha is, as despite people thinking he's some sort of guard blackie who gets destroyed by every other top tier, he's actually one of the most powerful characters in the series. So to pretty much summarize the video, I think it's pretty clear Sengoku in his old age is undeniably as strong as the OG admirals and can consistently be placed above them via narrative and feats. While Prime Sengoku on the other hand is just above this tier altogether, via being on the same team as Prime Roger, Whitebeard, and Garp, who are the strongest characters to ever live aside from Joy Boy and Emu. Which is why Sengoku will forever be the most downplayed character in One Piece.